Welcome to session two of our free listings live stream series. In this session, we will have a couple of our Merchant Center PMs joining us to discuss the onboarding and getting started process for free listings. And in this session, we will cover an overview of the free listing setup process within Merchant Center, how to verify and claim your website, how to add products and set up a feed, a review of product data requirements for free listings, and a special deep dive into G10s and other unique product identifiers that we get lots of questions on. Stefano is going to kick us off. Hi, my name is Stefano, and I'm a product manager for Google Merchant Center. Over the following slides, I'll be sharing the process for how to get started on free listings. Let's begin. All businesses are eligible to use free listings, whether or not you run paid ads with Google. Here's what you need to get started. First, you need a Merchant Center account. Merchant Center lets you manage how your in-store and online products inventory appears on Google. Within Merchant Center, you can manage feeds, view data, and explore different ways to show your products on Google. If you are creating a new account, follow the setup flow to show your products on Google for free. If you have an existing Merchant Center account, you can continue the free product listing setup via managed programs under the Growth tab. In the European Economic Area and Switzerland, you particip participate in free listing through a comparison shopping service, or CSS. Some CSSs manage your product data and your campaigns on your behalf, while others provide tools allowing you to manage your setup yourself. In countries where the comparison shopping services, CSSs, program is available, you can promote your products with shopping ads through one or several CSSs of your choice. However, you can select only one CSS to use for the free listings. You can change the CSS selected for free listing at any time via the CSS dashboard in Merchant Center. Keep in mind that the Comparison Shopping Services Activity dashboard is only available in the Merchant Center account where the merchant has claimed and verified their website. Let's continue to walk through the process of setting up free listing in Merchant Center. Step one. Verify and claim your website address, so it can be linked to your listings. All products will be rejected if a URL is not verified. We have some follow-up slides to thoroughly discuss this process. Step two, add your products to Merchant Center. There are many methods to add your products, which you'll also cover in the following section. If you already have an existing product feed, you can add free listings as a destination to this feed. In order for your products to show as an enhanced listing with rich product details, such as those shown on a shopping tab, you want to provide all minimum and additional data attributes for each of your products. Next, you want to set up your shipping services in Merchant Center or in your feed. Ensure that your, shopping, that your shipping setup accurately reflects your best shipping price and speed capabilities. If you sell in the United States, you need to set up tax information for each state where you deliver. This can be set up in either Merchant Center or in your feed. And finally, review and understand all policies for free listings to avoid any account issues. Now, let's dive a little deeper into the setup requirements. Beginning with verifying and claiming your store website, which are two essential steps in setting up your Merchant Center account. The setup flow will guide you through the process of adding your website URL, starting with HTTP or HTTPS. Then you will need to choose which method you prefer to verify your website. You can either add an HTML tag or upload an HTML file to your website, verify with Google Tag Manager, or verify with Google Analytics. We find that option one is the method that works best for most merchants, including if you use a third-party platform such as Shopify. When you verify your website address, a user in your account proves they have authorized ownership of the website. After you have verified your website using one of the three methods, you then need to log back into Merchant Center and click on the button to claim your website. Please keep in mind that only the user who verifies the website can later claim it. If you create a feed prior to claiming your website, you need to refetch it. If you use Cont APIs, you need to re-upload your feed. In order for your products to be approved, 
your website needs to remain verified and claimed. If you have lost your website claim, use this troubleshooting guide to learn why this might have happened and what you can do to fix it. Common issues are if the HTML tag has been removed from your site, or if another verified owner claims the same website, or a URL at a higher level. Now, let's discuss best practices for adding products into Merchant Center. First off, remember that if you're already using shopping ads, you can use your existing product feed for free listings simply by adding it as a destination. However, if you are new to Merchant Center, you'll need to create a product feed by choosing the best method that works for you. The top methods to create a feed are those you see here. If you currently partner with Shopify to manage your inventory, we recommend using the Google Channel app to complete the Shopify integration. Another automatic solution is to use automated feeds to add products from your website using structured data markup. With this method, Google can crawl your website to generate feeds for you. You can further enrich the data with a supplemental feed or via structured markup. If neither of those options apply to you, you can submit a feed via scheduled fetch. This is where you host a file on your website that contains data and schedule a regular time for Google to fetch updates. The fourth method you see here enables you to add products individually within your Merchant Center account. While it might take some time to add product listing one at a time, this is a great method for businesses with small inventories. No matter the size of your inventory, you can choose from various solutions available to help get your products into Merchant Center. While you recognize the four methods from the previous slide, you'll also notice some additional approaches for connecting your data to Merchant Center. Choose the one that works best for you. Once you've decided on your feed setup, the next step is submit your data. To be eligible to use free listings, you need to meet the minimum data criteria mentioned previously. Once your products are submitted for the first time, it can take up to three business days for your items to be reviewed. To prevent delays, make sure your submitted information complies with our policies. Separate feed and ads and free listing may cause your products to lose eligibility for shopping ads. Hi, my name is Frank. I'm a product manager at Google Merchant Center. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about feed requirements for free listings. Let's start by asking ourselves the question, what is the importance of uh, product attributes? Well, it actually helps us at Google to better understand your products. We then can better match uh, your products to your consumers. And they, in turn, will have a richer user experience and that effectively helps them to make more informed buying decisions of your products. Let's look at the example here. Let's assume you are selling t-shirts and you give us the size, color, and title of this t-shirt. So the consumer can actually use those as filter criteria to narrow down the search and find the product they're looking for. And that in turn will help you get better results for your business. Let's look at the basic data requirements. We need an ID from you for each product, a title, a price for which you want to sell the product, a link to your website, and an image of the product, a description to get more details about the product, and we want to know if you have it in stock or not. Let's look at the product identifier because it's very important for us to actually give a better experience for our users. So there are two ways you can actually provide us a unique product identifier, but we very much prefer the first one, which is providing all products uh, with a GTIN. Alternatively, you can also give us a manufacturer part number in combination with the brand name. And to ensure that you are approved for enhanced listings, you need to include GTINs on all products. And if you do that, enhanced listings means you actually get your products onto the shopping tab. We'll talk about uh, product identifiers more in a later session and also how you can actually look at your products and the disapproved products um, that are not enhanced uh, later on in the diagnostic section. Let's look at the attribute requirements for different product categories. Depending on the category, additional attributes are helpful to further characterize a product. Let's look at apparel. Color and size are important attributes here. 
as well as age group and gender for which you have designed the product for. Also be good to know if this is a new product or a refurbished product. If you have different variants, and variants are basically identical products that only differ by things like size and color, you can use the item group ID to cluster them. I also want to know if you sell this product on its own or as part of a multi-pack or a bundle. A last word on shipping and tax. So shipping conditions like um, cost, delivery time, and return policy, you set up generally in Merchant Center. But you can use the shipping attribute if you want to override the setting for a particular product that might have a different conditions that you want to specify. And the same for the tax attribute here that you can use to override the tax settings that you set up in Merchant Center already. Understanding unique product identifiers, such as GTIN, brand, and NPM. A GTIN is a unique identifier for commercial products that's usually associated with a barcode printed on the retail merchandise. It makes your listing richer and helps us connect users to your products on Google Channels. The GTIN attribute is required for all products with a GTIN assigned by the manufacturer. And our system is able to detect if a GTIN hasn't been provided for a product where one should exist. And in this case, if it's not provided, your products will be disapproved. Make sure that you use the correct GTIN for each product, including its variants, like different colors or sizes. Each has its own GTIN, so make sure that you submit the correct value. And also avoid adding incorrect GTINs to prevent feed errors. To find the, the GTIN of your products, you can refer to the barcode on the product, your product's packaging, or book cover. You can also download the barcode scanner app from your app store, and with the app, you can scan a barcode to get the GTIN and the GTIN type. Take a look at the example barcodes here to get a sense of how the GTIN can be displayed on your product. If you can't find the GTIN, you can always contact the product's manufacturer to ask for it. You can also search for it by company name in GS1, the official provider of GTINs and EANs, UPC barcodes globally. Note that if you are using a third party to find GTINs, be sure to verify its legitimacy. Now, some products might not have a GTIN design, and for these products, we recommend submitting brand and NPN. Examples of products that might not have an assigned GTIN include custom-made products, vintage or antiques, replacement parts, etc. However, if your product does have a GTIN assigned and you don't submit it, the product can be disapproved or the performance may be limited. Now, what happens if my product doesn't have any product identifiers? In this case, you can leave the GTIN in NPM blank and set the identifier exist attribute to no or false to indicate that your unique that the unique product identifiers like GTIN, NPM, and brand are not available for your product. However, only use this attribute if you are absolutely sure that your product doesn't have any unique product identifiers. Because if the identifier exist attribute is incorrectly set, your products will not be approved. The importance of providing rich product identifiers is to help us show your products across the web. So products submitted without any unique product identifiers may not be eligible for all shopping programs or features as they can't confidently classify it correctly. To summarize unique product ident identifiers, this is the only chart you need to remember. If your product has a G10 assigned by the manufacturer, you must provide the correct G10, and provide brand and NPN when available. If your product doesn't have a GTIN assigned by a manufacturer, you must provide the brand and NPN and make sure that it's consistently used across all channels. Now, what happens if it's my own product and I don't have my own GTIN or NPN? In this case, we recommend that you provide your merchant name as the brand attribute and add your product ID for the NPN attribute. Keep in mind that the ID is often the product SKU wherever it's possible. As mentioned before, you want to provide the same identifiers you use across all channels. For example, Shopify, eBay, and Walmart. 